Welcome to our roundup of just some of the news stories that have appeared across the Scuba Diver website this past seven days. The inquest into the death of Irish CCR diver Dave Hearn has concluded that he passed away after he had an oxygen spike on his closed circuit rebreather. Mr Hearn was an experienced technical diver who had been diving on a shipwreck some 20 kilometres out of Slade Harbour on the 25th of May last year when the fateful incident took place. In details recorded during the inquest, it was revealed that Mr Hearn was found lying on his back with his breathing loop out of his mouth. He was sent to the surface and his body was recovered by a Coast Guard helicopter. Technical instructor Dave Gration, who examined the CCR, found that a number of alarms had gone off to signal a spike in oxygen levels. The coroner stated that for whatever reason, Mr Hearn was not able to deal with these spikes, which caused him to go into a convulsion and the mouthpiece went out of his mouth, leading to death by drowning. Playa del Cocos in Costa Rica has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic as 80% of the community depends on tourism. But you can help by sponsoring a lamppost. This may sound bizarre, but bear with us as we explain. Virtually overnight, as the pandemic struck, Playa del Coco turned into a ghost town. Shops closed, people were left without jobs, and even the beach was shut down. Rich Coast Diving was one of the shops that had to close down. However, owner Brenda Van Gessel was not a person to sit still. Together with her friend Carrie, they set up a GoFundMe account to raise money and then went shopping to feed the community. After a few weeks, Brenda decided to start a non-profit named Colours Across Costa Rica and volunteers signed on. The project has been very successful and every Thursday, about 200 people line up to get a number, a garbage bag and a set of gloves. They then get sorted to either pick up garbage from the beach or streets or they bring machetes and go cut the weeds. All this makes Coco look nice and clean with a mission that the town is ready for tourism to return. Donations started to slow down, so Brenda had to think of another plan to raise more money. The electricity company gave permission for them to paint all of the lampposts. So right now, you can sponsor a lamppost for $100 US and then it gets painted by great local artists who do this on a volunteer basis. All the posts are designed with Costa Rican wildlife, so you can donate $100, pick your favourite animal, and it gets painted with your logo. Win-win for everyone. A two-ton elephant seal caused chaos in the Chilean town of Puerto Cisnes when it came ashore and wandered several blocks into a residential area. The massive animal, which was around the size of a small car, was eventually herded back to its natural environment by concerned local residents, police and Chilean Navy personnel, who blocked off its route further inland and then used a tarpaulin to guide it home. Other people threw water over the seal to keep it cool. The presenter of a local radio station shot some incredible footage of the incident, which concluded with the seal back in the water shortly before a COVID-19 curfew that has been imposed on the town's 2,500 inhabitants. Lloyd Scott is at it again. The charity fundraiser is back in his hard hat diving equipment, and this time he's doing the Three Peaks Challenge. Climbing the three highest peaks in England, Scotland and Wales is tough enough, without wearing nearly 60 kilograms of old school dive kit. This will represent the final fundraiser for the 58-year-old who first shot onto the world stage back in 2002 when he completed the London Marathon route in six days wearing his hard hat gear. Other crazy antics include cycling across Australia on a penny farthing and walking from John O'Groats to Land's End dressed as a T-Rex. He received the MBE for his services to charity back in 2005 and at the time joked it should stand for mad, bonkers and eccentric. Finally, not one, not two, but three extremely rare lobster have been saved from the pot. We first reported on a 1 in 30 million orange lobster that was found by a fishmonger in Fleetwood, and he duly donated the orange lobby to Sea Life in Blackpool. Shortly afterwards, we found that two more of the rare orange lobster had been found in fish markets in the United States, and these have also avoided becoming someone's dinner. Fred and Luigi, as they have been named, are now safe in aquariums as well. To read about these news stories, and plenty of others, in more depth, check out our website or follow us on social media for the latest new content. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell so you get notification for all new videos. If you're going diving in the coming days, enjoy and stay safe, and I'll catch you next week for another news roundup.